Hey there, my name is Sage and you are watching D&D Daily. Today I'm doing a blind stat block reading of the Damagoth Titan. I'm looking forward to it, hoping you are too. Let's jump into it. Damagoth Titans are towering monsters that blight the land around them. A Damagoth grows in power over the course of decades spent feeding on sorrow and draining life from nature. Eventually that growth turns the Damagoth into a Titan. The Titans maintain their lesser cousin's ability to trade magical powers for immortal's pain, but they tend to demand more punishing suffering in exchange for their packs of knowledge. So this is running off the back of the Damagoth, which I particularly loved for its Pact of Pain. And it seems like this is just the advanced version of it, so I'm looking forward to what kind of pact this creature brings. But first, I want to see what it looks like. So here we have a Damagoth Titan. It's it's missing the, the arm coming out of its chest, notably, but it still has the other multi multiple arms. And it's just massive. It's basically the same thing except humongous. Let's see if the stat block reflects that size. And it does indeed. The Damagoth Titan is a gargantuan fiend, typically chaotic evil. Has an armor class of 17 and a whopping 203 hit points with a speed of 40 feet. It lost its climbing speed because it's too big to climb now. Has a plus eight to its strength, plus zero to its dex plus eight to its constitution, plus seven to its intelligence, plus four to its wisdom, and plus five to its charisma. Like the other Damagoth, that is an absolutely phenomenal array of stats. The only one really low is dexterity. It can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in any combat, but it also has the, the mental stats to be quite the spellcaster. It has proficiency in the intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws, as well as arcana, deception, history, and perception skills. It is immune to psychic damage and is immune to the charmed and frightened conditions. It keeps its true sight out to 120 feet and a passive perception of 19. It speaks abysmal, infernal, and has telepathy out to 120 feet, and it has a challenge rating 16 with a proficiency bonus of plus 5. It is advanced to a legendary creature, gaining legendary resistances three times a day. It has the Pact of Suffering ability. Using a 10 minute long ritual, the Titan can forge a magical bond with a willing creature it touches throughout the ritual. The creature becomes bound by the Pact until it dies, the titan dies, or the pact is broken by a wish spell. So there is no longer a way to just break the curse like there was with the Damagoth. The Damagoth, you could use Greater Restoration, or not Greater Restoration, Remove Curse, to be able to end that pact. Well, no longer. Now you need a wish spell, or you need to kill the titan. Those are your two options. Or die. <laughs> Moving on, the Titan chooses one spell from the Necromancy or Enchantment School that is 8th level or lower. The bound creature can cast that spell using the Pact requiring no material components and using Intelligence as the spell casting ability. When it casts the spell, the creature takes 66 Psychic Damage, which can't break the creature's concentration on a spell. Once the bound creature casts the spell in this way, it can't do so again until it finishes a long rest. The Titan has a multi-attack. It makes two Agonizing Burst attacks. Agonizing Burst is a melee or ranged spell attack with plus 12 to hit, reach of 15 feet, or range out to 120 feet. It hits one target, and on a hit it does 3d6 plus 7 force damage, and if the target is a creature, the Titan regains 5 hit points. The Titan also can use its action to teleport 120 feet to any place it can see. Being a legendary creature, the Titan has legendary actions, the first of which is the Titan makes an agonizing burst attack, which costs one legendary action. The next legendary action this Titan is bringing to the table is Stalking Nightmare, which costs two legendary actions. The Titan uses teleport, after which it can target one creature within 20 feet of itself that it can see. The target must make a DC 20 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 4d10 necrotic damage and the Titan regains 10 hit points. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and the Titan doesn't heal. This is interesting, because without that bonus damage, you would simply use this teleport to keep your distance and continue blasting them using your agonizing burst from 120 feet away. But this gives incentive to actually teleport near them to do that bonus damage, but as the DM, you're going to need to weigh that risk versus reward. Yes, you can do some extra damage, but it might be putting you far out of position. So keep that in mind, and I think more often than not, I would opt for keeping my distance over attempting to do that, that bit of extra damage. At the end of the day, it's just 22 extra damage. Though that being said, I can imagine situations where I would opt for the damage. The third and final legendary action is Terrorize, which costs three of the legendary actions. The Titan targets one creature it can see within 120 feet of itself. The target must make a DC 20 wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 7d10 psychic damage and is frightened of the Titan until the end of the 
the target's next turn, and the Titan regains 15 hit points. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and isn't frightened, and the Titan doesn't heal. So this terrorize legendary action is what replaces the terrify action from the Damagoth before it. Overall, I think I lean towards using terrorize as your damage option and stalking nightmare as your mobility option. I think the most common way I would use this Titan is action, agonizing burst, agonizing burst, Legendary action, stalking nightmare when people get up close to me to a teleport 120 feet away. Next legendary action is another attack, so you're getting three agonizing bursts per round, and then continually pushing yourself 160 feet away from them so they continually have to charge you. I think that is probably your best go-to, but if there's no one close to you and you don't need to teleport this round, then you can terrorize instead for a bunch of extra damage and the potential to frighten them. And from the Damagoth's perspective as well, all of that is inferior to just having them accept the Pact of Suffering. That is such a fun storytelling element. I loved it with the Damagoth, and I love it with the Damagoth Titan. You can get a level 8 necrotic spell. I don't know them off the top of my head, but level 8's pretty high, especially if you got this earlier, but it's gonna cost some health. Quite a bit of health. I love that dynamic. I think it's fun. Again, very warlock, mini warlock patron type thing. That's the best part of the stat block, hands down. This has been the blind stat block reading of the Damagoth Titan, and this is D&D Daily, where we release new D&D content every day. Since we're releasing content, if you want to see me tomorrow, hit that subscribe button and we can talk then. See you on the next one.